Okay, okay all right. So, hello, dears. Ayan. So, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our um, first ever. I'm uh, not really first uh, because you had already your um, lab safety na pre-recorded. Second, pre-recorded lectures um, in our parasitology class. All right. So, um, before we start again, so I'll be your teacher for this course. So, again, hello. I'm Sir Mark. Okay, that's Mark with a C. Please lang. Um, so yeah, I'm introducing myself because um, <laughs> I think most of you are my new students. So hello, second year. So for more, hello, hello. Okay, all right. So mga fresh pa, no? Wala pa kayo stress sa medtech char. But hello, welcome, no? Welcome to our class on parasitology. Um, yes, so we're going to learn a lot, hopefully here. And yes, in any uh, this is how I do my pre-recorded lectures, guys, no? So... Uh, these are. This is also the method I did last sem with my third year students, and they preferred it. So I just, ako na lang siyang ibuhat usob here. All right. So I hope you're okay with it. <laughs> Ayan. So um, for our pre-recorded lectures, no. Um, generally, um, I try my best to make it lively. So na ajo na mga jokes o sa hi or na ay mga binuang. So, although mura kong buang diri, kaya ako rin usa nag-record, wala ko yung mga students <laughs> na makareact. So, um, yeah, para at least naman engaging or funny. Kung naarap po ko yung jokes na mabutang. Pero if wala, then serious rata. <laughs> okay? Alright. And I believe, I think, I have a section na um, there are students who cannot understand fully uh, the dialect or Cebuano. So, I have to... Um, you know, make my pre-recorded lectures in English as much as possible. So, that's a challenge. <laughs> Ang hirap mag-English, Char. Pero, well, we'll do our best. I'll do my best. Alright? Pero, when I do joke, siguro, or like, kana mga binuang, I think I'll do it in in Cebuano. Kasi naman, <laughs> lain kayang joke in English, no? I'm not sure if nakagets mo sa home point. Pero, lahi ang ihang dala. Or, lahi ihang iba ang kanyang dating <laughs> kung bisaya all right okay ayan so again hello hello daming chika ni sir mark but hello yes i hope i hope that you at the end of the semester you'll get to learn a lot from me in this course parasitology and um, you get to remember all of that especially when you come uh, when you go to the board exam i think this is the first subject in your second year life that is um, included in the board exam uh, Aside from, of course, your intro to medical, uh, in first year intro to MLS, that's also included naman sa boards. Pero dili, uh, it's not a separate subject. Whereas for parasitology, this is a separate subject in the board exam. This is uh, partnered together with uh, microbiology. Ayan naman. So, so that's microbiology, parasitology in your board exams. All right? And uh, yeah, so this is uh, one subject in the board exam. So... Uh, this is the second day. Uh, this is the second subject in the first day of the board exam. And um, actually, today is the first day of the January 2021 boards. No, well, uh, in this time na nag record ko. So, woo! so um, during this time, yeah, quarter to eleven. Uh, by eleven a.m., they'll start with this subject. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm lecturing about uh, parasitology. All right. Ayan, so dami kung chika. But anyway, yes, yeah, so parasitology, no, we'll get to learn a lot of um, uh, worms. <laughs> a lot of parasites that are clinically significant to the human body. All right. And parasitology is one of my favorite subjects. Um, before, uh, when I was a student, and even until now. So I'm really happy that I get to handle this um, parasitology. This is um, second favorite to bacteriology, which is I, which is what I handled last sem. So I'm happy that I get to handle this before I leave ICLS. Charat lang, drama. All right. So again, this is uh, parasitology. Okay. All right. So for today, uh, for this lecture, we're going to talk about um, an intro to our subject. Okay. Because again, it's fitting that before we go into the different lab procedures, the different methods in identifying parasites. We first, um, or I first give you a background of the subject. Although most of the topics here, or most of the lessons that I'm going to talk about here, will be discussed further in your lecture class with Mam Bernal. All right, but as your lab teacher, so I, you know, me as a pabibo kid, char, <laughs> I try my best to at least give you already a background, okay, so that you don't get to be confused, you don't get to be shocked 
you don't get to be shocked sa mga malalearn nyo. Alright? Um, again, you'll get to be introduced to different scientific names na in this class in parasitology. So, um, at first, siguro it would be a TMI or too much information ninyo, but try your best to um, digest no? slowly, alright? And you get to internalize it slowly. Alright, okay. So again, this is Intro to Clinical Parasitology. Alright, so we'll discuss first um, some terminologies. So we'll start first with the word symbiosis, alright? So when you say symbiosis, it just means living together. So it's usually uh, the living together of two different species. May it be animals, may it be humans, alright? But the fact is, they're both living together, alright? That's symbiosis, alright? Um, so we're starting with this term because the symbiosis is like an umbrella term for all of the other um, types of symbiotic living, example. And one of that is parasitism. So we'll go into that uh, in this slide. So, of course, you have commensalism. When you say commensalism, it's a type of symbiotic relationship, meaning there are two species or two animals, two humans that are living together, but um, one of them, all right, is ben uh, it's beneficial to one and neutral to the other. When you say neutral, it doesn't hurt the other or it doesn't um, benefit the other. Just nothing. Nothing happens to the other. So, yes, do you have commensalism relationships Jan? Mga friendships niyo? Commensalism ba yan? Okay. Paki-check na. Red flag. Charot. Okay. Alright, so that's the point of commensalism. There are two species, alright, or, you know, two animals, two humans that are living together. One, uh, this relationship is beneficial to one, but it's neutral to the other. So it means um, to the other, it's just, you know, there's no effect. It's not, harm, it's not harmful nor beneficial. All right, that's the point of commensalism. All right, okay. Next, you have uh, mutualism. When you say mutualism, by the name itself, mutual. So the relationship is um, beneficial to both. All right, so ayan, do you have mga mutual understanding ba dyan? Do you have mutualistic <laughs> na mga relationships? As much as possible naman, guys, no? Our relationship should be mutualism <laughs> or mutualistic, okay? And of course, what we're really after is parasitism. So, um, parasitism is a type of symbiosis, okay? So, these three guys are a type of symbiosis, all right? So, I'm sure I think this the, these terms have been introduced sa inyong elementary pa lang, I think. As far as I can remember, I, I've already known about these terms elementary pa lang. So, hopefully, review na lang, okay? All right. So, parasitism by the name itself, it's a type of symbiotic relationship, but the relationship is harmful to the other, whereas the other is benefiting from uh, the relationship. So, gets? So, it's harmful to the other, whereas the other, um, the other is benefiting at the expense of the other person. So, you know, mga parasites, alam nyo na. So, ayan. So, this is, you know, this is the bulk of our discussion in parasitology. Okay, so we're looking after those organisms, alright, or those, um, yeah, organisms that are benefiting all right, at the expense of the other. So in this case, at the expense of humans, all right? So these are organisms, again, that are benefiting at the expense of the other, in this case, at the expense of us, at the expense of humans, all right? So that's uh, for parasites, okay, or parasitism, all right. Now we go now to, again, parasitology, ayan, so because, again, this is our bulk. Parasitology is, again, an area in biology that, again, is concerned in the dependence, ayan, so... Please take note pa dyan. You have friends ba? May mga kakilala ka ba dyan ng mga parasites? Baka kailangan silang, <laughs> baka under sila sa parasitology. <laughs> so again, point, dependence of living, of one living organism on another. So, you know, an organism depends on another so that that organism will live. Okay? So, I hope that's um, understandable. And what we're really concerned is medical or clinical parasitology because, again, this is a, a branch of parasitology that is concerned more with, again, human parasites because, again, we're um, more on the diagnosis of human parasitic diseases, okay? All right, because, again, there are other branches of parasitology like veterinaria, veterinary parasitology. Uh, that's for, you know, our animals, our pets, na para, mga parasites. So that's a different branch. And other branches of parasitology pa. But what we're concerned is, again, medical or clinical parasitology, which is, again, concerned in human, all right? Human parasites, okay, that cause disease, okay. Now, we go now to epidemiology. So when you say epidemiology, of course, you have your biostats naman, di ba? Last sem, so I don't have to further <laughs> um, um, explain this. But in, in the area of parasitology or in the area of our class, it's just a field of study that monitors and uh, the trends of parasitic infection. So it's really specific. Epidemiology again, it's a it's a large field, all right. But what we're focused, uh, but what we're focusing uh, in our class is 
in terms of parasitic infection. So it monitors the trends and uh, the occurrences, okay, of parasitic infections. All right, and this is this is from Zybig. Okay, so again, um, from our orientation, you already know one of our books is Zybig, right? Na, uh, parasitology book. And according to Zybig, these are some of populations that are at risk for contracting parasites. So as you can see, um, the people that are really at risk are those that are vulnerable, those that are um, poor, those that are subjected to stressful environments, um, non-conducive for living, right? So example, Individuals in underdeveloped areas and countries, yes, the man. So exhibit A, Philippines, okay, all right. So of course, because of living conditions, poor living conditions, um, because of these conditions, then that facilitate, all right, the spread of these diseases, okay. You have refugees, of course. Refugees, those are, you know, some people that are coming from different countries that were um, exiled wow, by Taylor Swift joke, or those that are... Um, uh, refugees, yeah, that they move to another country because of some turmoil in their hometowns or uh, homelands like that. So, of course, refugees still the same with the point that um, maybe in the area where they come from or where they came from, they're already endemic or there are already parasitic diseases there that's happening, all right, that are normally found there. Still the same point with immigrants and visitors from foreign countries because, again, uh, Though there are some countries, example, Africa, um, America, South America, that have already, actually not, not only them, all right, but each country or most of our countries in the world, they have already endemic, all right, or some parasitic diseases that are normally found or normally occurring in those countries. Example, in the Philippines also, like malaria and all those parasitic diseases, okay? All right, individuals who are immunocompromised, of course, because again, immunocompromised, so their immune system are we is weak, all right, so uh, the, though, um, they, they cannot already fend off or they cannot immediately or effectively dispose off of the parasites because, again, they're immunocompromised. When you say immunocompromised, their immune system is qu quite weak or their immune system is not working properly, all right, because they have been subjected to some surgery or they have diseases in the immune system, all right? Ang hirap mag English, guys, promise us in. <laughs> Char, sige lang. Anything for you? Ah, charot. Okay. And individuals living in close quarters. Because again, close quarters, so there are some parasites that can be transmitted from person to person if close contact. All right? So, yes. And of course, children who attend daycare centers. Still the same. Um, you know, children, they don't have their own minds yet. <laughs> so, uh, there are times that, again, they are close to one another. All right? So, um, there are some parasites. Example, um, Enterobius um, vermicularis. Uh, which is your pinworm, okay? Pinworm, okay? Or in Bisaya, Kigwa, all right? <laughs> so uh, this particular parasite can be transmitted in close contact, all right? So in children, of course, for children who has this infection, uh, the children can transmit or can, um, yeah, can transmit uh, the eggs, all right, of the pinworm to other children in daycare centers. Because again, they're close contact, they're always playing, no? And again, they don't have their minds of their own yet. So they don't know the importance of hand washing and all that. So yes, all right. So that's for epidemiology. Okay, now we go now to another point in parasitology or another term which is known as modes of transmission. Now recall in your, um, in our pre-recorded lecture in lab safety, I've mentioned already modes of transmission, right? So uh, diba? In the parts of the, um, uh, what they call that? The chain of infection. Oh my gosh, Mark. <laughs> the, the chain of infection, right? It's part of the um, component and modes of transmission. In the sense of parasitology or in our class, modes of transmission, by the name itself, it's just the means, all right, or the methods whereby a parasite gains entry, all right, or kung, kung asa siya musulod, or it's a method, or muna siya ang paagi para makasulod ang parasite. Same muha. All right. So it's a means whereby a parasite gains entry into an unsuspecting host. All right. Or unsuspecting human. Okay. Or host. Yeah. Putting animals. So yeah. All right. So as you can see, again, this is still from Zybig. There are a lot of modes of uh, transmission for parasites. Um, as you can see, it, it's varied. No, it could be from food. It could be from insects. It could be from sex, all right, for sexual intercourse. It could be droplet. It could be anything. So as you can see, um, again, it could be anything. <laughs> so um, I mean, like the modes of transmission for parasites are quite varied, no diverse. 
not only like you cannot say um, that you know it can only be transmitted through blood it can only be transmitted through sex yeah it could be any mode of transmission depending on the parasite okay all right so you have ingestion usually the most common mode of transmission for most of the parasites is this one ingestion of contaminated food or drink usually that's the most common okay for most of the parasites i'm not saying that all of the parasites have just most all right so again this is the most common ingestion of contaminated food or drink primarily water all right so mga waterborne foodborne okay hand to mouth transfer if example fecal oral yeah fecal oral so example um, you're a patient who has example lang ascaris okay all right ascaris now example um, you know you went to the bathroom and then, of course, to dispose your, uh, to answer the call of nature. <laughs> but then, um, after disposing, you did not wash your hands. And then, you directly put your, like, use your hands in eating food. Or, you know, you put your hands to your mouth. Okay? So, that's fecal oral. So, from the feces, in a way, directly to your mouth. Because, again, of improper hand washing. You didn't clean your hands and all that. So, you then get the <laughs> parasite. Okay? So, that's fecal oral, in a way. All right? Ayan. Um, insect bite, again, very common also. Um, vectors, all right? We'll talk about vectors in a while. Um, again, there are a lot of parasitic diseases, not only parasitic, viral, even bacterial diseases that can be transmitted by insects. So a very good example, you have malaria, 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 yes, caused by um, or transmitted by your uh, mosquitoes, right? Um, other parasites, you have also like trypanosoma, you get to, we'll get to, we'll get there soon, all right? And all the other parasites that can be transmitted by insects. Okay, so intra, entry via drilling through the skin. Oh, still the same. I think it's through the insects, insects. Unprotected sexual relations. Yeah, so we have also sexually transmitted um, uh, parasitic disease. A very good example is Trichomonas uh, vaginalis. Uh, yeah. So by the name itself, vaginalis. So of course, it can be found in the vagina. All right, so this can be transmitted through sex, trichomonas vaginalis. All right, droplet contamination and eye contact with infected swimming water. So a lot, there's a lot. Varied uh, modes of transmission. But the point again is, uh, modes of transmission by the name itself is the means, all right, or the ways on how a parasite gains entry into a person or into an animal or into a host, okay? All right, now we go now to the parasite-host relationship. So we've already been talking about hosts, uh, about, you know, parasites. So what are these? There are a lot of types, all right? And we go first to the classification of hosts. By the name itself, hosts is, by the name host, diba? Right? When you are a host, you are um, hosting. <laughs> you are like, um, uh, you are housing someone or like you are accommodating someone, diba? Right? When you're a host, all right? So that's the point here also. Uh, a host is someone, is someone or something, it could be an animal, a person, an insect, whatever, that a parasite gains entry to and it's now the source of his, or it's, the, it's now the source of the parasite's um, nutrients and all that. So it's the thing, it's the person, it's the insect, whatever, that the parasite um, extracts, all right, or uses for its benefit or for, for its um, daily life, daily uh, functioning. All right, so I hope you get the point of host. And then we go into the different uh, types uh, of host, which again, it's really used a lot. Uh, these terms will you'll encounter um, in your parasitology, especially in your lecture when you discuss about life cycles, right? So when you say uh, first is definitive or final host, when you say definitive host, it's the host that harbors, all right, um, the sexual reproduction of the um, parasite and also the adults live in that host all right so you're the host that <laughs> gamitong parang um <laughs> gamitong kang hotel <laughs> or motel sa parasite <laughs> because again the sexual reproduction happens in you so in a way drasya nagpadami or drasya nagpadaghan or uh, it's the host where again sexual reproduction occurs so that uh, uh, babies will produce so that they will be there will be many of them all right okay ayan so again maybe human or any other living thing it could be again insect it could be an animal yeah so that's a uh, definitive host all right sexual production when you say intermediate all right so intermediate is just a sexual production so um, basically what what the host does or what the parasite does is if you're an intermediate host you're just used for parang um, for daily life para mas mu mu 
mu proliferate siya or mas mudag uh, mas mudako siya all right or so that it will reach an adult stage so as you can see what it uh, harbors ang intermediate host is the larval stage so when you say larval mga baby pa lang or like mga teens <laughs> teen na mga parasites inana but sexual reproduction doesn't necessarily occur all right okay if you're an intermediate host all right okay so paratenic when you say paratenic host you're a host um, in which example the parasite does not develop into further stages example um, if you're a paratenic host um, so this parasite is larval uh, a larval stage until the end okay so it will not go into an adult stage anymore so that's a paratenic host all right Parasite remains alive and is able to infect other susceptible hosts. So, but that, that's the point of parathenic host. The parasite does not develop into further latter stages. So, example, if the parasite in you, if you're, an inter, if you're a parathenic host, is the larval stage, it will become the larval stage until the end, until mamatay siya. All right? Okay. All right. And, but it's, it can still transmit to other hosts. All right. For reservoir, by the name itself, reservoir, like a carrier. All right. So, reservoir. You're um, a reservoir, so the parasite lives in you, all right? It doesn't necessarily cause you harm, walang infection na nangyayari. So it's just like, you're just there para, para mabuhay siya, <laughs> okay? So um, the parasite doesn't cause you harm, okay? What it does to you is just um, for proliferation in a way, okay? And um, para magpadami siya, okay? And it doesn't cause you harm, all right? Ayan. So, and ikaw, since you're the reservoir or the carrier, since you are not feeling any symptoms, any infection, what you can do is you can, of course, transmit it to other unsuspecting or susceptible hosts. All right? And when you say accidental, by the name itself, accidental, supposed to be the parasite is not this host, but it is found there. So, example, naturally or normally, this parasite now is, ang, ang host niya is pigs. All right? Uh, yahang host or its host naturally is pigs. But um, when it is found in humans, it's now, co uh, your humans are now your accidental host. Because again, it should not be found there or it should not be found in humans. It should only be found in pigs. All right? But maybe because of, you know, eating undercooked pork, eating, um, you know, or, or, like eating feces of the, of the pig. Example, if you're growing pigs and then wala ka nag wash of hands properly. So you get to, example, ingest feces containing the parasite. So you now become the accidental host. Because again, it's not normally found there. Or the parasite should not normally found, should not be found normally in this um, host. Example, in this, in, in, in our example, example, humans. Okay, so example, did you get it? So pigs are the natural host. But then, if they are found in humans, example, they're now called, uh, the humans are now accidental hosts. Okay? Ayan. So, that's the point of hosts.